Hi everyone, I'm Ben, and this is the Board Game Blueprint. This week, esteemed guest and industry veteran Ken Franklin is going to talk to us a little bit about how he's used the Game Crafters Custom Laser Acrylic to his advantage for a recent prototype. So let's jump on over to his table next door and see what he has in store. Hi Ben, hi everybody, my name is Ken Franklin. This is a prototype I've made of a game that I like to call the Everything Tree. I'll be presenting it to publishers at Gen Con 2019. It's been in development for about three years. It came from an idea that my teenage granddaughter and I had while driving home from a con about a game where people were competing to pick fruit from a huge tree that had everything everybody needed. So uh, as you can see, the tree is about a foot tall it has four levels on it and it's got these cute little climbers I'm hoping I can put that up there where you can see it there you go and I'm not going to go into the, pretty much anything about how the game is played but uh, I originally made this prototype with uh, custom punch board squares that interlocked and provided a big trunk uh, for this tree and it worked quite well but uh, at Protospiel, Michigan, a couple weeks ago, people were saying that they couldn't see the other side of the tree and they couldn't see players on the other side of the tree. And this is a des game designed to have people have a, a lot of intimacy and closeness. So when I got home, I started designing this uh, clear acrylic trunk. Let me show you some tips about how I made it. All right, we're looking at the screen of my iMac, and the first thing I want to show you is the blank template for the acrylic custom pieces in the Game Crafter. This is a four inch by eight inch slab. You can see the red areas where it is bolted down to the machine and the uh, dashed blue safe line where you should not direct the laser to cut. Uh, everything needs to go inside here. Your cuts should not be closer than an eighth of an inch apart or the pieces are gonna break off. But this is your playground for what you're going to build. Game Crafter makes this in two thicknesses, one eighth inch and one quarter inch. Uh, each one of these one eighth inch pieces you buy is going to add three dollars to the cost of your game. Uh, for the uh, quarter inch it's going to be a little over six dollars and in addition to that you're going to pay for every inch the laser travels as it makes your cut. And we'll see why that's important in just a little bit. I've taken this four by eight inch template and hidden all of the uh, things from the Game Crafter as to, you know, where the edges are supposed to be. And on this I have drawn these shapes. I selected the uh, slightly concave sections here. I've added quarter inch tabs where the holes are in my uh, tree pieces. And then I've duplicated that onto another sheet. I've created a one quarter inch gap in the top half of this piece and a one quarter inch gap in the bottom half of these pieces so that they will interlock in a cross piece and form the second and third levels of my tree. After you've created these lines you want to export it as an SVG file and there are several ways to do it but only one way will work. So here's how I'm going to show you. You want to save a copy you want to select the format as SVG, not SVG compressed. And you don't want to export it as an SVG. You want to save it as an SVG. Then you want to click Use Artboards. And you want to select all of the ones that you're going to make pieces of. And it will make a separate SVG file for each of your artboards. Each of those SVG files is going to have one solid line for each of your pieces. And that simply won't do because when the laser etches it out, it will fall out of the machine and down into the bowels of the Game Crafter's cutting machine, causing the craftsman to swear at you with all sorts of colorful terms. And you're going to get a piece of unrecognizable gunk from your results. So we need to put little nicks in between sections of this line so that you have to pop it out of the template when you get it home. If you're going to make a cardboard or a 1 8 inch acrylic piece, you want those notches to be 0.01 inches thick. 
but in the case of quarter inch, 0.01 is sometimes a little hard to punch out, so GameCraft recommends you make it 0.05 inch gaps. Well, how do you put these gaps in? Well, you see over here, this is the component studio page called SVG Optimizer, where you can load in each of your artboards. In this case, I've uh, put in the one that we saw on the left. And then we click here on split into equal parts. And you usually want to put three or four parts. And the cut width, the default is listed as 0.01. We're going to make it 0.005 since we have a uh, quarter inch thick plastic. And then we click on the little number of the path. It says, you sure you want to divide it into four parts? You betcha. Now we have four lines. And in between each of those lines is a gap that is exactly 0 0.005 inches wide. Very easy and painless. Now, the laser will do exactly these paths in the order we've specified them. But that is rarely the best way to do it if you're going to try to save money. So the next thing you do is come up here to the top and say Auto Sequence. Gives you a choice between faster completion and shorter travel length. Remember, you're charged by the inch for travel length, so you want to slide this bar all the way over to the right and click Start. And it'll think about it. And in this particular case, it couldn't find a better one. But most times when you build your own path, you're going to find out that uh, the sequence is not going to be optimal. So this thing will save you often 70-80% of the laser burning costs on each of your devices. Once you've done that, you save it, and then you use that when it's time to load that in to your custom design page. There's one other custom design that we've got here, and that is painting the images on the acrylic pieces. So I want to take a little diversion and show you how that works. We've got this clever little climber uh, d drawn by my son, the graphic artist Matt Franklin. And it has black areas and white areas. And we would like both of those to appear on our page. The Game Crafter will paint white on these items, but you have to specify a specific white layer. So here's how you do that. You select with your Magic Wand tool all of the empty spaces on here. Uh, don't forget your little empty spaces like behind the guy's arm or right here between the lot, vine and the sleeve and whatever. Select that, invert the selection so you're just selecting the person, and then you fill that with black. Oh, wait, what? Black? I thought we were printing white. No, it's black, and let me show you what that means. Here's the black silhouette of the item. And that's going to be a layer of white that will be painted on last on your image. Well, you don't want the image to be all white. You want us the other colors to come through. So what you do is this. You go back to your original item and you select all the black with your uh, magic wand. You click on the black. You go up to select and select similar. And now you've selected only the black. Then you come down here and you can still see the little dancing ants around where the black was and you say cut. After you say cut, all of the black will be removed and this black that remains is in effect your white layer. You would save this layer as in this particular case climber white and you would want to save it as a PNG file. Save as PNG as a copy. And this will preserve the transparency and make it exactly the right number of pixels. Then you can then you can paste all of your black pixels into a new layer. And you see all the white has been cut away and you also save this as a PNG file. And we'll show how that all comes together in the next scene. Here is the construction zone for a single custom acrylic shape. We'll start out looking like this. See color art for side one? You would pull in your climber black layer here. And in this case you see I've created one that has four climbers in each. 
Why have I done that? Because you're buying the whole slab even though you only use a little bit of it. So if you're making prototypes and you're going to make more than one prototype, try to double and triple up to fill these spaces as much as you can to keep your costs down. So I put my color art in here. I then take my SVG file that I made all the little nicks in and I drag it over here to the cut lines. And then you can see the red lines and where they line up with your individual pieces of paint. Now, you probably want paint on both sides. So you would take that PNG file, make a copy that's flipped upside down, uh, excuse me, flipped left and right, and you load that in and now you see we've got ink on both sides. Then you say, which sides need white ink? Well, you click those and you drag the white art to these boxes that say white art for side one, white art for side two. You can see the image is black in here, but on the proof pictures here, you will see the, the uh, white. That's how it's going to be interpreted, and that's your proof. Now, it's kind of hard to see, and you really can't zoom in on it, but you'll have a button for approve, a button for deny. You click on approve, and then you can go ahead and uh, make your game. Now, in my case, I had four players. So once after I've done this, I didn't want to do all those steps again. So I went over here and say, copy blue climbers and made another one. I renamed it pink climbers, changed the color, and I'm done. Copied it again, renamed it purple climbers, changed the color, and I'm done. Nice way to save a lot of time. Well, there you have it. The result is this uh, beautiful uh, trunk on this game. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, this creates as much table presence in person as it does in this video. And I hope I've given you some ideas to go forth and do great things with uh, custom acrylic pieces in your Game Crafter project. Thanks for listening. Back to you, Ben. As you can see, the results really speak for themselves about this awesome table present prototype that Ken has put together, all again thanks to the services available at the Game Crafter. Hopefully we can see some other really cool things, including one of my own, and looking forward to seeing what you can put together to realize your dream design. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on future content like this. As always, I'm Ben. This has been another episode of the Board Game Blueprint, and together, let's build something great.